You can learn lighting, framing, storytelling, or editing, but if you don't know how to translate your vision into actionable camera adjustment, you'll always be at the mercy of getting whatever image you may get. Photographer Mark Denman once said, it's not enough to just own a camera. Everyone owns a camera. To be a photographer, you must understand, appreciate, and harness the power you hold. Now today, I'll walk you through the three main camera settings and lay the foundation of filmmaking. Before we get started though, download my free camera setting cheat sheet below so you can follow along. The cheat sheet is formatted to be printed on a 5x7 card so you can easily keep it in your camera bag for quick reference. ISO is often referred to as the sensitivity of the sensor. The truth is the sensor sensitivity is set during the manufacturing process and there's nothing we can do to make our sensor more or less sensitive to light. ISO is an amplification or gain of the electrical signal created by the sensor. When the sensor is capturing a small amount of light, boosting the signal will result in the image looking brighter. However, looking at our camera setting cheat sheet, we can see that amplification or gain of the signal will always result in a level of degradation or noise, regardless of the camera you use. The more the signal is boosted, the more the image will lose quality. Native ISO or base ISO is the ISO level where no gain is added by the camera. Sony described base ISO as the point where no unnecessary gain is added to the sensor's output, and it's the level where the camera is able to record the greatest possible dynamic range. Some cameras may use 300 ISO as their native ISO, others may use 640 or 800. Now it's critical that you know what your camera's native ISO is, as a simple rule, you should try to shoot in native ISO as much as possible to limit the amount of noise in your image. In fact, today, I never shoot in anything but native ISO and use my other setting and light sources to expose properly at native ISO. The shutter is the one setting that most people overlooked, yet it can produce the most creative opportunities. Most of my very best shots are because of the shutter. Once you understand how the shutter works and what its purpose is, it will unlock new possibilities. The shutter is a mechanism or an electronic function, and sometimes both, to expose the sensor to light for a very specific length of time. Shutter speed is typically expressed in fraction of a second, like 1 30th of a second or 1 2,000th of a second. Just like ISO, shutter speed is a function of the camera, not the lens, so different cameras will have different shutter speed capabilities. Now let's go back to our camera setting cheat sheet. You can see that the faster the shutter, the more light you'll need. You can also see that the faster shutter will capture sharp moving objects, while a slow shutter will capture blurry moving objects. Now, why would I want blurry images? Well, you tell me, you're the cinematographer. What are you trying to convey with your images? Motion blur is an important part of cinematography, and we as creators can control the amount of motion blur we want our image to have. Using a fast shutter like this one at 1 8,000th of a second, the car is perfectly sharp. If I slow down my shutter, like this shot at 1 24th of a second, now the car is all blurry. Now the shutter is a lot more than just a setting used for exposure. It has a real creative function. That's where, as a cinematographer, you'll need to make decisions based on the style of the image you want to capture. Aperture is a function and a component of the lens, not the camera body, so that's something you'll have to look into when selecting a new lens. Aperture is just like the iris in our eyes. It can be open or closed to let more or less light into the camera. It is measured in f-stops, and on our cheat sheet, we can see that the larger the number, the more closed the aperture is. The more the aperture is open, the shallower the depth of field is. So if we want our image to have a sharp subject and a blurry background, you now know you need to shoot with the aperture wide open or at its smallest f-stops. Lenses with a large aperture or an f-stop anywhere below 2.8 are considered fast lenses. Fast lenses will allow you to let more light into the sensor, making it possible to have a shallow depth of field, shoot with a fast shutter, or film in low light condition. Now that we've covered the three major camera settings, exposing your image will require that you first decide what you want your image to look like. So for example, if I want to film a fast moving car and have it be sharp, I now know that I need to set my shutter speed to be very high. If I also want a shallow depth of field, I know my aperture needs to be 
open as much as possible. Depending on how fast the shutter is, I can open my aperture more and more until my exposure is correct. If with my lens wide open, I still don't have enough light hitting the sensor, I now need to either raise the ISO, which I try not to do, or slow my shutter down enough to expose my shot, but fast enough to capture the car sharply. Now, there are no formulas for camera settings. Don't fall for the shutter rule or triangle of exposure. Your camera settings should be dictated by the shot you want to achieve, not by some rules. The best way is for you to continue to experiment with your settings to try to achieve the different results you're looking for. Now, thank you for watching this video until the end. And if you're interested in learning more, I have created a course specifically on camera settings designed to help cinematographers elevate their skills to a professional level. So if you're looking to turn your passion into a career, I invite you to check out my essential camera setting course. Now in the meantime, thanks for watching and happy filming.